Let's talk plumbing. Our van has six electronic ball valves and one inlet. And with the push of a button, it transforms from city water filled to an outdoor shower. If you're interested in turning an inlet into an outlet or using electronic ball valves to make your vehicle plumbing smart, then this is the video for you. I'm Mike, this is Smarty Van. Let's get to work. All right, so today we're talking about plumbing in a van or really any vehicle. And I should note, this isn't really an installation video where we talk about fittings and exact installation methods. Instead, this video is gonna be about overall system design and some of the techniques we used in our van. I also wanna mention that I'm gonna try something new. I'm gonna keep this video a little shorter. I know some of my videos tend to run long, and then I'm gonna do a live stream follow-up. So if you have questions after watching this video or you want me to dig a little bit deeper, be sure to tune in for the live stream or drop your questions down below in the comments and I'll try to answer those in the live stream. All right, let's dig in. All right, here we are in our water dashboard. Many of you have seen this in some of our other dashboard tours, but I'll give you a quick recap to sort of set the stage. Across the top, we have three leak detectors, one in our glycol area, one under the water tank near the plumbing there, and one in the shower plumbing area. Then we have some temperature sensors outside under our gray tank and outside on the box so we can sort of see what's going on in cold climates. And while we've been down in Baja, Mexico, I have a little template sensor here that shows us how many liters we would need to fill to 35 gallons, which is the amount of water we usually fill in our tank. On the left, we have our water levels. These include gauges for our total gallons, then our gray tank on the right. Underneath, you can see individually our primary and auxiliary tank levels as percentages and in gallons. Then in the middle, we have our six valves. I've mentioned this in some other videos and a lot of you have had questions. So today we're really gonna dig into what these six valves actually do. We have a primary to aux valve, a tank balance valve, a gray dump valve, an aux tank select valve, fresh dump, and fill select. Below that, we have a trigger for one of our automations, which can actually top off the primary tank using the auxiliary tank water. We'll dig into that in a little bit. On the right, these are plumbing adjacent controls, including the pump, the hot water control for the Rickson's hot water system. Then there are switches for freeze protection down below, which are related to plumbing, but we're not gonna talk too much about that today. These simply keep our lines that are outside under the van from freezing. If you have more questions about our dashboard here, be sure to join the live stream when that starts or just drop your questions in the comments below if you can't make it to the live stream. All right, let's dig into the diagram for our plumbing. All right, here is a diagram of our entire plumbing system. First, I'll just give you a tour of the fixtures that we have in the van. Obviously, we have a sink for our kitchen and we have a drinking water fixture here that is fed by an Acuva UV filter with a charcoal pre-filter. We also have a shower mixer for our full-size shower and we have a mixer for our outdoor shower. So that makes four fixtures in the van. We have three tanks in the van. Two are for fresh water and one is for gray. Our primary water tank is a 36 gallon over the wheel well tank inside the van and our auxiliary water tank is an 11 gallon tank underneath the body where the sliding door and step are into the van. Our gray water tank is in the spare tire carrier area and that's 28 gallons. All three of our tanks are from Northwest Conversions and you can find links for those down below. And I'll note that we're in a 2022 170 inch wheelbase 4x4 Mercedes Sprinter. All right, let's take a look at the diagram. All right, you can see those three tanks represented here in our diagram and you can see our six valves that we talked about on the dashboard highlighted in yellow. There are four two-way valves and two three-way valves. A two-way valve is basically an open and closed valve, and a three-way valve connects one input to two outputs or two outputs to one input. Either way, there are three connections on a three-way valve. All right, let's get some of the simple valves out of the way. This 12-volt valve is connected to our gray water tank, and when it's open, it drains the gray water to the ground, or in our case, we also have a garden hose thread connected to that, so we can use a short piece of garden hose to dump straight into a sewer line. There's a similar valve connected to the output of our auxiliary freshwater tank, which when open will allow the fresh water to drain to the ground. If you remember from the diagram of our van, the primary water tank sits above the auxiliary water tank. So this 12 volt valve here allows the water from the primary tank to gravity feed into the auxiliary tank. So if you wanted to empty both tanks, you could open this 12 volt valve here, which we call primary to aux, and the freshwater drain valve, and both of those tanks will drain to the ground. Gravity will pull the water from the primary tank, down to the auxiliary tank, and then out to the ground. And that brings us to our first three-way valve. We call this our tank selector valve, and if that valve is set to this side, the primary water tank is pulled by our water pump down to a manifold where it is distributed to our fixtures. 
If the valve is set to this side, our aux tank is used to pull through the water pump and down to the manifold. This valve here is a two-way valve, on or off, and we call this our tank balance valve. If this valve is open and the three-way valve is set to the freshwater side, it would create a loop where fresh water flows from the primary tank, through the valve, through the water pump, through this 12 volt valve and back up to the freshwater tank. That's not particularly useful, but what we really use this for is when this valve is set to the aux tank side. If you remember, the auxiliary tank is lower than the primary tank, which is up over the wheel well. So this allows us to pull from the auxiliary fresh tank through the three-way valve, through the water pump, through the tank balance valve, and up into the primary tank. That way we can rebalance our tanks. Gravity pulls the primary tank down to the auxiliary and the water pump pulls from the auxiliary up into the primary. You could use this technique to redistribute weight between different tanks that are located in different places of your vehicle, or you could simply use it as auxiliary water storage and top off your primary tank as needed. I find a system like this gives us lots of flexibility with weight distribution, water temperatures, and our overall carry capacity. All right, let's move to the final valve. This is another three-way valve, and this is where the real magic comes in. If you remember from the beginning of the video, I showed you our A-Core RV water inlet. Well, we're using it as both an inlet and an outlet, and this three-way valve makes that possible. When the three-way valve is set to this side, city water can flow through the valve and up into our primary tank. And if we want that water to continue onto the auxiliary tank, we simply need to open the primary to aux valve. Once the auxiliary tank is full, we have automations that will close this valve and allow the primary tank to fill. If you only want to fill the primary tank, you simply leave the primary to aux valve closed. All right, back to the three-way valve down at the bottom. If this valve is set to the other side here, that allows our outdoor shower mixer to push its tempered water out through the valve and out through a shower head that we've configured outside the van on a magnet. So this effectively makes our inlet valve an inlet and outlet valve. This check valve prevents city water from flowing backwards into our system, so water can only flow in one direction here. This effectively makes our three-way valve a shutoff valve for city water fill. So once our auxiliary tank is full, this valve closes, and once our primary tank is full, this valve turns to this side, and this check valve effectively turns off the city water. So we have automation that protect ourselves from overfilling our water tank. You might notice that we're not using an accumulator, and that's because our Seaflow 42 series water pump has a bypass valve, which lets it run at really low flow. So even through our Acuva UV filter system that has really small pipe diameter, we don't get any cycling at all. So once you dial in the pressure switch on this pump, it doesn't cycle all the way from our drinking water pressure levels up to our shower level. So highly recommend this pump. Check it out down in the description below. You might also notice that there's no gravity fill option on the exterior of the van. I wanted to minimize the number of portals and outlets that are on the exterior of the van body. So instead, we put access hatches on our primary water tank at each end. These are eight inch portals that allow us to open them up, which allows us to clean the tank, but also allows us to dump large buckets or jugs of water into the tank, or just use a hose if there's no garden hose fitting that we can use from pressurized system like city water. All right, let's talk about the actual valves that we decided to use. Our electrical system is 12 volts, so I knew I needed something that could be driven by 12 volts DC, and I ultimately decided on motorized ball valves because they usually have a low power consumption. I ended up going with the US solid motorized ball valves, and they come in a lot of flavors. They come in lots of sizes, they come in normally closed or normally open states, and they also come in a variety of wiring configurations. You can get them in two wire auto return, two wire reverse polarity, three wire, three wire one way setup, and a five wire configuration that can show you the status of the valve. We ended up going with two wire auto return because you simply need to apply 12 volts to the two wires and that will cause the valve to open if you chose the normally closed variant. These valves have capacitors in the housing which store up power and when 12 volts is removed from the wires, that capacitor is used to close the valve in the case of a normally closed valve. This means that our valves fail safe. So the valve on our gray water tank or fresh water tank won't accidentally open. If anything, when power is removed or there's a power failure, the valve will close. This is also true of the three-way valves. They go back to their default position. So I've configured the valves in our plumbing to make sure that the default state is a fail safe state. You could definitely use some of the other wiring variants for your setup, but I like the two wire auto return. The other nice thing about the two wire auto return variant is that you only need power to open the valve. So it uses very minimal power and at rest, it uses almost no power. The power that's saved in the capacitors is used to close the valve. And next time you open the valve, those capacitors will be recharged. I mentioned that we went with normally closed valves, but you can also get these in normally open if you need. 
Another important feature that I wanted to have on all of our valves was a manual override. So these valves have a little thumb screw that you can pop up and use to turn and open or close the valve. Not all of their valves come with this feature, so if you want that, be sure you're selecting the correct valve. As I mentioned, these come in a variety of diameters. Most of our fresh water is done with half inch because our PEX pipes are all half inch. The nice thing about these valves is they're full flow ports, which means a half inch valve has an actual half inch hole size when the valve is open and doesn't restrict the flow of the liquid at all. I should also mention that these come in both stainless steel and brass, and you should probably be sure to use stainless steel in any of your fresh water drinking system. Although I do have brass valves in our gray water dump, which tend to be a little bit cheaper. There are obviously lots of other valve types out there, and we avoided solenoid valves because they require power to stay open or closed, and they're more susceptible to clogging with debris. These ball valves have a lot less chance to clog with debris, and they're really reliable. I also went with US Solid because they have a good reputation, and they're readily available on Amazon. I'll link to all the different valves that I used down below. All right, so now that you've seen our plumbing diagram and understood how we use six valves in our system, let's go back to the water dashboard and take a little deeper look. Most of the automations for our plumbing system happen behind the scenes. So for instance, if our primary tank drops to 0%, Home Assistant will open the aux tank select valve and pull from the aux tank and announce it over the sound system. The primary water tank is empty, switching to auxiliary and purging air. We also get warnings when our overall water supply drops below certain levels, and those sound like this. Warning, critically low water supply. Only 1.8 gallons remain. Now we can obviously control these valves manually, and I've built these in an ESP Home controller as covers. This was before the valve entity was added to ESP Home, but I've left them as covers because I use time-based covers, and they actually show the amount of time it takes for the valve to fully open. It just feels a little more interactive. We also have automations that can be triggered by buttons. If I click this button here that says top off primary, that sets off a series of events that turns on the water pump, opens the aux tank select valve, and the tank balance valve, which will pull water from the auxiliary tank up into the primary tank. The automation is watching for the levels of the tanks and manages the different valves to make sure that we don't overfill the primary tank and also closes the valve once the auxiliary tank is empty. Then if the pump was on, it leaves the pump on, but if the pump was off, it sets the pump back to the off state. One of my favorite automations is for when we're filling a fresh water system. We usually fill our auxiliary tank all the way full and our primary tank almost full. So we have an automation in place that monitors the status of the auxiliary tank and when it's full, it closes the primary the auxiliary valve and allows the primary tank to fill. If the primary tank were to become completely full, it will close the fill select valve, which will stop city water from coming in and overfilling our inside tank. If you have questions about these automations or how they work, we can dig into that in the live stream, so be sure to keep your eyes open for that. Or simply drop your questions down in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them during the live stream. As always, thank you to our top tier Smarty Van members. If you want to become a member and help support the channel like them, click the join button down below. Don't forget about the Discord where we hang out and nerd out, and of course, there's links to all the products I mentioned, including a link to my plumbing diagram down below. Until next time, safe travels.